Hi, this is your Sapin Bhartia and we are here at Open Source Summit in Vienna, Austria and we have with us once again Katie Stewart, Vice President of Dependable Embedded Systems at the Living Foundation. Kate, it's great to have you back on the show. Lovely to be back here. Thank you for inviting me. Of course, it's my pleasure to talk to you always. Uh, of course, we are at the event here. So uh, I would like to hear from you, first of all, uh, what kind of you know uh, participation you are seeing. The weather was bad, but I don't think there was any impact on the the room. Yesterday was also full, a lot of it. So what kind of crowd, what are the attendance you are seeing from the perspective of the, because you wear so many hats, so I have to also keep an eye on which ha hat yes, you're wearing. Yes, you have to watch that. Yeah, so me, today yeah. you are wearing the Elisa hat, so let's talk about what kind of attendance, what kind of uh, conversations you're so hearing. So actually yesterday we had um, the, we had the um, track on safety here at OSS and the rooms were nicely packed and we had lots of good discussions going on there. So the interest in the Figuring out how to use open source, and in particular Linux, in the safety critical context is definitely growing. Um, one of the things we're sort of seeing is, you know, how can we all do this out in the open? How can we collaborate? So there's going to be a lot of things happening this week to help advance that. Um, because, you know, problems like, you know, self-driving cars, problems like using Linux in safety critical environments like space or aerospace, um, those aren't going away, and we need to figure out how we can do it better. Excellent, thank you. Uh, did you folks make any announcement here at the pro? Yeah, um, we just announced two new members. Um, Hamburg University is joining us as a um, in the Elisa project to help with the aerospace side of things. And we've also just had Lynx Software just join us as a new member, and they're also interested in some of these areas too. And so, like say. Open source is being used in so many areas, in particular Linux, in the embedded Linux side is moving into these areas. So we're seeing companies join in and try to help collaborate on how to use it effectively. And that's exciting. Now, if you look at these two new members, you know, one is university and one is you know, Linux software. Uh, so talk about what capacity are you, they joining in, what value they are bringing to the project, and what value they are looking at. Well, so I think they're looking for communities to help figure out how to do it right. Doing it right is important to everyone. And so having the research aspects of looking at things from that side and really understanding the problem and figuring out how we can apply it, especially on the aerospace side, well, space and aerospace side is I think the focus from Hamburg. And then Lynx is, used to be TimeSys, it was acquired. Um, and so they have a long history of working in the Linux space and working uh, with us. And so they join in right now with um, Canonical and SUSE and Wind River and Red Hat. So we're having a lot of the distros now participating with us, uh, trying to who have you know who sell Linux as a product and provide services, but they want to figure out how we, they can help build up a way of working and doing the analysis of Linux. So there's that part of it. Um, so the fact that we've got all these distro vendors now participating um, is helping to move Linux forward here. And the other side that's helping to move us will be at Linux Plumbers um, later in the week. And so we've got a variety of sessions going on at Linux Plumbers, specifically um, the one I'll be working with uh, the TSC chair from Elisa and co-hosting is Safe Usage of Linux. And so what we want to be working through there is, okay, what do the upstream kernel maintainers want to see um, when we are storing the safe requirements? And then what principles make it easier for the developers to work with the safety community? Because Linux is there right now. The question is, how do we do the analysis properly? And just to refresh memories of our viewers, just quickly let's also talk about the Elisa project, the, the focus of the project as well. So the Elisa project is all about enabling Linux and safety critical applications. And so what this means is it could mean like there's criticality functions in Linux, or there could mean that Linux is just part of a full system. In fact, one of the big learnings I took over the last few years is safety is not just about a component. Safety is about a system. And so you have to do system engineering and analysis at the system level. And depending on how critical the um, part of the component is to harming people, loss of cause, you know, large costs, things like that, 
you tend to do different analysis and potentially mitigation if it fails. Because most of safety is figuring out, well, if this goes wrong, what do I do? And will it do things in a way that's sane? Because you know, you're, you've got your car on the road, for instance, if a subsystem fails on the car, you want to not crash into something, right? You want to be safe. Um, same on, obviously, airplanes, same on you know, anything like this. And more and more of our critical infrastructure is using open source, and it is important there too. So we've got all of these, um, these areas here, and so it's a question of figuring out, okay, well, how do we actually pull all this together? And we're all using Linux here. And so the cheat for using Linux is, well, how do we understand what the safety analysis is depending on and whether the Linux kernel is supporting it or not? So if Elijah is about you folks create software code or it's recommendation, it's documentation, it's specification? So it's a little bit of all, actually. Um, so we've been host, starting to host some open source projects, uh, the one of which is Basil, um, as well as KS Nav tool. And so the Basil project, um, Red Hat donated that to, the pro to Elisa, and we're incubating it there. And this is an open source project for managing requirements. Traditionally, all the requirements and safety stuff has been in proprietary systems. And so there's a few open source projects that are emerging now for actually managing requirements. Because the start of these requirements is your safety case. So if you've got a system and you want it to be safe, you have to say, okay, well, I want it to do this in this period of time, or it needs to work within, you know, this function has to happen. So those become requirements into a system design. And those, and Linux is a component in that system design. And sometimes, okay, well, if Linux is running and doing, you know, bringing in information from the hardware and providing it to the application, what happens if Linux, you know, um, crashes at some point, right? It doesn't happen that often, but you know, there may be a reason. And so it's a question of, do we need to have another processor with something watching it so it can make sure it states it and, and that the right default behaviors happen. Most people design software with a view of, I want to make it function and do this. Safety is looking at it, well, if it fails, what happens? And designing a system, not just a component, but a system so that that's, like I say, well, you know, when something goes wrong on the hardware, you get like log errors and things like that. And so, is there something sitting there to process that, to take and make the right interpretation with whatever control algorithms are in place? So that's kind of what we're looking at with the Elisa. So we're doing some, there's some open source projects there and there's some collaboration on tooling. And then there is also um, work going on on refining the open source engineering processes. Um, and so there's an open step group. And so that's trying to come up with best practices. We have another group that is working on putting a full reference system together. Because like I say, Linux is working in a system context. So in that group, the systems group, we've got a reference application at the top level, which is AGL, is helping us with. We also have the Linux kernel in there. We have uh, Zephyr in there, and we have Zen in there. And it's all being built with Yocto. So you have an open reference system that we can do reasoning about at the system level. Oh, and it all generates an S-bomb. So it pulls all my stuff together. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're doing there. And um, then we have verticals sitting in um, the Elisa project where people in a domain or around a standard are gathering to figure out what's going on and to figure out how they're using Linux, what they care about, and so one of which is the, um, there's been a medical devices one that I've been participating a little bit closely in for, since pretty much the start, where we've used an open source project there because in its analysis there's no, there is no confidentiality issues, there's none of the NDA stuff that the safety space usually is filled up with. Um, the other one we've had is an automotive one where we're looking at using Linux in an automotive context. And we're starting to look beyond just your telltale apps and simple applications like that to, okay, what do we need to work with with the software-defined vehicles and things like that. So there's work going on with some of the other groups and other communities that we're collaborating with to get this clearer. And then the newest working group we started last year is the Aerospace Working Group. And there we're looking at um, both uh, avionics as well as space and how we're using open source and Linux in particular in these contexts. And so with the aerospace working group, um, 
One of the things that's really interesting right now is we're starting to look at what we're doing um, for space. And so with that, we've been talking to NASA, NASA came to us, and there's a lot of open source software that's being used in that area. And so we're working on pulling together those who are interested in the space industry in particular. Um, we've got working with the ESA here in Europe. They're participating as is Airbus here in Europe and Boeing in North America. Boeing is actually leading off our aerospace working group. And so we're incubating a space grade Linux. And so um, we're looking at figuring out what do people want to collaborate on to have and harden up and then share the analysis for what's being used and what the implications are of it. And so this, again, this, all the analysis at the Linux level, you know, people do it sort of very narrow segment, but we don't reuse like the analysis, like we've been reusing open source. And so part of what I'm going to be trying to do at Plumbers is helping to work with the upstream community to figure out some best practices for open source sharing too. And how closely do you work with the kernel community? Um, so I've been, um, my introduction was mostly from the kernel community side of things. I'm not a developer, I'm a manager. I manage teams contributing to the kernel, we figure things out that way. So um, I've also been a volunteer helping to organize Linux plumbers now for seven or eight, you know, six, seven years, somewhere in that range. And so um, one of the things that you know, I want to do is give back is to help make sure we have good events so the kernel community can talk to each other. And so Plumbers is one of those events for us. And it's a volunteer event to a large extent. The Linux, help, Linux Foundation helps us a lot. They, the, the, the events team there is awesome. Um, and they do a lot of making sure we have the services and support it. But um, the volunteers want to curate the content and make sure it's working for what they want to talk about. And a big factor of Plumbers is the whole notion of these mini conferences, where you have a referee tracks but then you have these mini conferences, which are half day sessions. And there we're focusing on various topics and solving problems. So I'm really excited about on Friday afternoon, we're going to have a safe, lineage, safe usage of Linux session for the first time. And there I would really like to see if we can get to some clarity as to where we actually store requirements. How do we work, uh, what are some of the practices of working best with the upstream kernel community? so that we can all start to share the analysis efficiently and effectively. Um, but there's other parts because part of the um, analysis that has to happen is from a requirement you need to know which code is involved with it and then also um, which tests need to be run to prove out the code. And so we're doing some, you know, um, Boeing uh, with Parvalisa is doing some pretty good work about test coverage and doing, making that all done in the open. Um, we're also doing work on, okay, how do we get all of these pieces connecting? Um, so these things are all sort of, you know, they're all emerging. And so it's an area where we can all research together and share practices. And that's what Lisa's is about. Uh, you know, we're not, we're not gonna create a safe Linux kernel at the end of the day, but we're gonna show people how their kernel can be made safe and the analysis can be done. That's what we're trying for. If there are any use cases, I mean, when you talk about automotive, because when you look at automotive, there are two kind of automotive. One is the traditional ice base and one is the AVs. AVs are all software driven, most probably running Linux, you know, in some capacity. So are there any new use cases that you are like, these are potential users for Alicia project, uh, but they are still not tapped and you're working on that. If you can yeah, share. That's fine. Um, well, what we're looking for right now is some new medical because we've pretty much done most of the analysis that we can do on the, what the project we've been doing. So we're quite interested to see if there's some folks that want to do some analysis in the open of specific medical devices and the problems associated with using Linux in it. Um, that would be well, very welcome. But um, the other area that we're looking at trying to grow are doing the analysis because these are sort of around the safety standards to some extent because each of these safety standards has different considerations. But the industrial, robotics are everywhere. Robots are everywhere, right? And it'd be nice to have some more um, industrial cases to, because they'll start to bring in the timing considerations a little bit more because of factory automation, line floors, things like that. And, you know, I'm kind of excited that pretty much real-time Linux is finally, all the pieces are finally heading up to the upstream kernel. And so I think we'll finally have real-time formally upstream Possibly even by this Thursday, we'll see. <laughs>
<laughs> so, um, but it's it's really close at this point now. I was just in the real time Linux um, meeting uh, last night, and we were talking about the last stages of it all and the order of, of things sort of emerging, and then how do we continue, you know, working with the project there. But the Elisa project, um, in fact, I learned about safety initially from real time Linux. And so it's sort of coming back full circle. And so having the considerations for safety, working with real-time Linux, and how we make it go forward is certainly a consider you know, this is all work that's in progress. Can you also talk about what kind of processes are in place or what kind of working groups are there to, to kind of help uh, like leverage all these projects? Because they are complementing each other in oh, one yeah. capacity they're or very much, They're very much complementing each other. And part of what we're trying to do is get the projects to talk to each other. And to, like, so we, we've, in Elisa, like for instance, we work very closely with AGL, and and because of the safety you know, considerations, and they have a lot of use cases for their reference uh, work that they do. We're working very closely with the Octo because they actually understand generating S bombs, and so like you know one of the things that's kind of cool is that um, the Octo is now able to generate the new SPDX 3.0 S bombs. And they're the first project out there to do it. Um, and, you know, proving it out with something like Yocto means all of a sudden it's available to the entire embedded ecosystem that's using Yocto. So, you know, we've, for the last couple of years, you've been able to generate an SBOM automatically. And what that gives you with that SBOM is it gives you the transparency of what's actually there. And for us to do safety, we need to know what's there. You know, is Linux actually present or not? Is, you know, um, what libraries are you using? You know, what compilers have you used to build this? All of this is important in the analysis for safety. And so the fact that the SBOM generation suddenly makes that all surfaced and makes it all visible to everyone. And so that's why in the systems group, one of the things we'll be doing is generating these SBOMs. And you know, as we're working for the, um, SC, towards the SCA compliance and things like that, you need to have the transparency over here. And so the fact that you can do that with the Octo today and you could, for that matter, you can do it Zephyr today too, but Yocto is the first one to do up to SPX3.0. So I'm really excited about that. There are a lot of things you can or cannot share, but what's next? What is in the pipeline for the Elisa project? So the next thing in the pipeline for the Elisa project is getting the space grade Linux launched. And so we're actually having a survey. Um, and anyone who's interested in the space area and certain parts of it, things like um, Space ROS, um, F Prime, all of these are open technologies. And there's a lot of interest in the Linux community after we know that Linux has been running on Mars, right? Um, and we know that Linux is running on satellites. And so being able to run Linux in these radiation-hardened environments and with the constraints, um, there's, you know, how do you configure it? How do you do the analysis to prove that certain things should happen or if something goes wrong, what you do next? And so sharing and collaborating on this is something that, you know, there's a mul there were multiple groups in NASA they were already sort of doing this in their own little silos. And so part of this doing it out in the open is to break down these silos in organizations and between organizations. And, you know, no one's going to be, you know, certainly public government funded entities like ESA and like NASA, you know, they want to be efficient with the taxpayer dollars, right? And so they want to, and open source is a way of being very efficient and effective. And so that's why they really, they came to us and they're very interested in seeing how can we all collaborate on the analysis of the Linux part which is what aerospace has been looking at anyhow. Um, the aerospace has also been looking at, Boeing is contributing into the project their tiny configuration and the analysis, and work, they've, config, they've contributed that in. So they've basically got Linux configured in a certain way for you know, a small footprint. And then they're working on open sourcing their analysis to us as well now too, or opening their analysis up. And what we have to do is figure out the infrastructure to track it and to catch it. And so, you know, figuring this is part of, you know, this week's at Plumbers, it's talking to these people. And then quite frankly, the linkage between the um, requirements of the code to the test, the testing for the Colonel CI folk, that project we're trying to work with. And they're trying to figure out, well, for me to run these tests, why should I run these tests? What requirements am I running these tests for? What, am I, what functionality am I trying to prove? And, you know, and so they have that interest too. So a lot of these projects in Linux have an interest Realistically, at the end of the day, everyone cares about quality. And this is a better way, in some ways, of taking that quality up a notch 
for us. And then as we have to try to support Linux kernels for like 10 year periods, we have the tools more available to us. And so these are all steps towards getting us to that stage. Kate, once again, thank you so much for joining me today. Give us an update on the project, you know, and also congratulations on these new members. And as usual, I look forward to the next discussion. Thank you. And thank you very much. Pleasure to talk to you as always. And thank you for your interest.